Hello everybody, welcome back to our sixth video on Selenium Maven and how to design a project. On today's video, we are going to take care of Navbar test 2 when we had a stale element issue, if you remember from last time. And after fixing that stale element, which was a dead element, if you remember, it was not active no longer. We kept using this each, each, each. All we had to do was getting a click to best sellers. So we're just going to get rid of all this. We didn't need to do. Maybe that was just a demonstration of getting a bunch of elements at once. And to go forward, and just remember, you don't need this inside the if body as well. This is just uh, getting us the camera products. We just print them out. That's all. The name of camera products. And we are going to do that and next up we're going to do github setup and then try to push the code and the very first thing to do is to initialize the git and we're going to take a look at the settings that we had to do including config global user maybe we have to do that once that's all and then adding username optionally we can also do that through the interface and I'll show you how to do that. And then if time allows, we're going to add helper methods inside the base class. For example, scroll down. That's one of the things we might be doing today. And let's get started. I already have Navbar test three down here. And what I will add here, let's make it a little bit bigger. All we have to do is to go to the website. Let me open the website. Not this one, not this one. All we have to do is to click on bestsellers. That was the goal. And now if you look at the expat, a tag. It's a tag for the bestsellers. And then it's just doing contains text and the text is bestsellers. Let's copy this. And I'm just going to go right here. Let's temporarily put it right here and get what we need to get from here. Just like these two lines. First one is initializing our web elements. We're not currently using them, but we're going to add this one to our pages later on. And when we do, that's when you're going to need this object to be here so it can initialize web elements through the driver object. Okay, we open the website and you already know that we can also open the website in our setup method. We can optionally do add it inside our setup that you see right here. But no need right now, we're just testing how we can go through the test. Okay, let's go down here. And what we need to do is to click on bestsellers. The most simplistic way is to go through find element and by class through expat. And then we're just going to add this locator right here. Now let's move this one down. And then uh, we're going to do just click. That's all. Maybe slightly smaller. It's going to be better seen. Okay. Now let's run it and see if it's going to do the click. Oh, 
All right. So it's doing the click. Next up, we need this line just verification. How we get, and I'll just go through again. So we have a list of web element on line 89 and the name of our list is camera products and it's finding any element that has the text camera. Last time we did there were three cameras inside the bestsellers. Now it looks like there are only two bestsellers but oh well that's no problem and then next up 92 we're just using lambda for each operation and getting each web element. In our case, we're going to end up with two, most probably. And we are just using web element that get text. If you remember this one, uh, it doesn't work with method call the double colon because we just wanted to get the text, not the web element. All right, let's run this and see how that turns out. All right, test pass. And you can see there are two cameras left. That's it. This is just getting rid of the stale element. And how we can put this one, let me show you how we can skip this line. This line up here. So basically, we just need to get this locator to our Amazon homepage. Let's copy. Let's open our Amazon homepage. And as you can see, these are our web elements. And we can add another one just the same way. And this is going to be, let me just copy one of them. And this is going to be an expat, and the expat is right here. And then this is best seller, best sellers, or something you can name whatever. So now we can access the best sellers through object of the Amazon class. And let's go back to bestseller test and let's close this. And then we're going to clean up. Just let's close, make it silent. And here what we can say an obj, that's the object of Amazon Home. And we can say, oh, if we call by class, we have to make it static, right? If we make an object, we should be able to access all the elements. And let's go back and see what's going on. This is as you can see, class name by static right and if you don't have static then my object is only seeing this one but object can still access it even if it's static but it's not showing so let's just say dot bestsellers but the convention is to use the class name like this all right keep in mind if you are making aesthetic you mean oh i want to call it by class name which is amazon home 
and if you make it non-static then you're telling oh this time i'm going to use my object and let's use the object right now for our demonstration and then all we have to do is to dot click now let's see if this is gonna work All right, it got the cameras. So now I can get rid of these two lines, including this one. So this is gonna be Navar test three. Hopefully that gives you an idea. Also, let me show you one last thing here. The both cameras show the keyword smart, smart home. All right, they both have common words all over the place, but let's just use smart. So I'm going to turn this lambda expression into method body, just like this. And this requires that. And I got the text, but I also want to do an assert. Let's say I didn't get assert from test ng. Let's see. Oh, just a second. Let's check our POM file. Why don't we have assertions here? Oh, I see. So that shows that we don't have testng here. Okay, no problem. Let's just add testng. How we do that? Open up a page and open up a tab and say Maven dependency for test engine. That's all. And then you can see the versions. Let's get 710. And they're right here. So we copy this. And then paste it inside dependencies block. The block ends right here, so we can add it right here. And you see this M button right here? Load it, and let's give it a minute, and it's going to load it up. All right, there it goes. Now let's come back here. And just one more time, let me reload the Maven. All right, everything seems to be running. Now, let's say assert, as you can see, test ng showed up. And then we're gonna say, assert equals and our actual is from the website which is web element that get text all right so this is our actual value and we expect that Let's um, turn this to assert true. 
Okay, that's going to fit better in our case. We can also do uh, assert equals with uh, actual expected. But oh wow, we can say this one much easier. So you get text that contains, let's say smart, or you could say smart home or something. Expectedly, they both have smart, as you can see in the output. They both have smart. So they should return us, no problem. And if there is a problem, it's going to tell why it's not true. Or it's going to say expected was true, but found false. All right, that's the natural workflow. Okay, let's run it again. Okay, as you can see, if the page didn't close, most probably assertion failed, but the page closed later on. I don't know why that took so long. But if it ends up not closing, when you have your quit method open, like I say quit here, right? So in that case, probably Wi-Fi slow down or something. And we can see that test pass. So it doesn't tell if it's found true, it's going to make the test pass. But it doesn't give you anything. So we can go old school and add if web element get text contains smart and print true or print Yes, it contains. Else, just print. It doesn't have smart keyword in, in there. Okay, this is it for Navbar test three. Hopefully you got the idea. Just to show everything in the same line, let's move this down as well. So camera products, driver, find elements by XBAT. All right, these are all broken down. And actually you, probably know that you can create by class objects at the top of your page and I'll show you later on how we can do that. All right. Now that takes care of the stale element in the simplistic way. We don't need to go all the trouble to use an object multiple times when the object is no longer active in the DOM interface so what we can do next is to set up our github this is where we're going to push our code and let me open terminal right here i did two things uh, since this is a new computer i didn't set up anything so i said i'm going to set up this email we have coding at gmail.com and this is the username for github so you're going to have to do this before you do this action. What is this? So you're going to open up your page and then you're going to go to github.com and then sign up for an account. And when you do, which is like what I did, and then you're going to verify your email. And then uh, later on, you're going to see overview repositories and blah, blah over here. And right now, we don't have anything, but we can just click this plus here. And there are a bunch of options. And we can say new repository. And then this is, what did we name it? Let's see, it's got to be the name that we have here. So it's just behalf. Okay, 
So we're going to say the hat. Whatever name you have for your project, it's a good idea to have the same name. But there are ways you can use different names. And here you can add description. You can keep it public or private. Let's keep it public. I'm going to share the link in the description, hopefully, this time. And then you can add some things, and you can always add them later. But my recommendation is not to add right now. Don't click any of these. And I'll tell you why in a second. Just click Create Repository. When you do this, as you can see, it already printed the exact line of code that you have to do. All right, so let's take this. And let's paste it down here. And then we can minimize this. It's already created. So you can also go and check out your repositories now. So go to your repositories. And you can see it's right here. But there is nothing in it right now. So when we push it, you're going to see that happening. Now, we're going to do git init, step one. But before we go through the steps, I just want to show you where in your IntelliJ settings. First, go to VCS and enable version control integration. That's the very first thing to do. And it shows you have three options. And choose Git on this one. And click OK. Now when you come back to VCS, now you have a drop down Git option that shows a bunch of stuff here. And you can start cloning other projects from GitHub. Easy peasy. And other things you need to do time to time. Now, let's go to File and Settings. You can go to Settings here or just go click this icon right here for Search. And then let's search Git. And then it shows a bunch of options for Git, but let's click the first one. Okay, not it. Let's click more. I just need to see settings. Okay, these are the settings right there, git settings. There it goes. Or optionally, you can go to file settings and type git and it's going to find this one. And this is where the git should be installed. Let's test it if it's there. And as you can see, it has a version 224. And if you don't have it, it will probably prompt you to download it. But you can optionally download Git. And how you do that? And let me open a page. Say download Git. And you can say for Mac or for Windows. So your choice, it's the same website. And then you can go to download. And it also has the options for Linux, Mac OS, or Windows. And you see the current version is 221. Optionally, you can get the latest version here. Now I have 224, no biggie. But when you're working with the team, make sure you are on the same version, same level with your team. Otherwise, versions are very important. 
if they're not aligned that's a big problem all right let's close this and then go to github that's the next best thing and as you can see intellij does not have this so if you want to use the interface of the intellij you're going to add your github here so you can choose login via github let's click that and you're going to click authorize and then you're going to click authorize and you, when you see successfully authorized in github you can close this page now you, it should show up here we have coding or your name and then click ok and now we can do the first step all right i'm just going to copy it and then paste it right here and since i did that prior to this activity it says reinitialized but on yours it's going to say initialized in a repository or something and then next one is an optional thing but why not you can add a readme and this is what can be done but do you see that it cannot add this one because you have to have it inside your project we can create it so it can be found but we don't need to do that right now but if you want to do it, just right click on your project, new file, and then specify your file extension, say md.md or txt, however way you want to push it. And instead of this, we can say git add, let me delete this, and git add src. What I mean by whatever you see under source folder which is all these things except everything else i'm not interested all right i don't want idea i don't want target i don't want iml extension and these things i don't want so which is why we're going to say git add src and then it says do this git commit and then do dash m and this is our first commit let's say project let's say selenium project say step one you can put any node here as you can see it created nodes for all the changes now the next step is to set up the branch so we're going to say git branch main and then press enter and then it says let's move this one over away it says git remote at origin and it already created the link for me so i can just copy and paste it and whatever project you make you're gonna also get the same setup you're gonna only thing that's gonna different is the link github we have coding will be different on yours and press enter and then the last step is to do push the code so you need to do this at least once next up you can just 
later on, say if you have change, you're gonna add SRC, then you're gonna commit, and then you're gonna do just git push, and that should work. All right, inside our terminal, once again, terminal is right here. You're gonna say git push u origin main. These are references, by the way. You can have them customized, but until you get pro, even when you're pro, don't deal with them. Uh, it's gonna get messy and you don't want it. But if you say, that's my line, that's my job to customize them, you should really learn it better before you take any action. Okay, press enter. And you're, we're going to see something. All right. Now, since this is the first time I'm pushing code, you might end up seeing something like this. All right. So this is, you have coding. And this is my password. Hopefully you got it correct. There you go. If you see something like this, if you see a link that shows that it's successful. All right, you can optionally click this link and there you go. SRC, Selenium Project Step 1, add it right here. And now you can see the main and test folders. All right, so now you can all access this code now. This is pretty basic setup. And as we keep going, we're gonna make this better. All right. Now, hopefully you got the idea how to do it. But if I were to do going forward, say you did this once, all, all steps. Now, you need to do this next time. So this is your step one. This is your step two. And then this is your step three. And you don't even need to say dash u origin main unless you've changed your master or other places, if you have different branches. But you can just say git push. But again, I'll show you how to work with team and how you can add people, remove people, change the accessibility. And we're gonna take care of that going forward. Now, let's see what we have next. Okay helper method inside base class. And what are some things? Let's go to base class. We don't have anything here. And base class is no longer extending. We are not extending it. If you remember in our previous videos, we killed that connection. So now, we need to get the driver here from Amazon home page. So I'm just going to say Amazon home, but drive. So I'm still using the same driver from Amazon home drive. Now this driver knows that it's also from Amazon home. And we don't really need to have this one here because we are not really adding web elements here. More like we are adding here some basic methods. What are those things? For example, let's add one. Let's say public void refresh. 
for example, we can say driver dot navigate dot refresh. That's all. If you, for some reason, if you want to refresh the page, especially when you have problems with the locators or wait times. And we are going to learn adding more other stuff later. I'm just showing you the simple ones. And let's say back to home. Let's say return home. So basically, it's to say driver the navigate. Let's say you can say to, and then we can pass the Amazon link here and where we have it inside the test. So let's get this one. And this is the home page. Optionally, what you can do, let me also show you. If you know that you are not going to go more than two layers inside the web page, you can say navig what? navigate. Oh, I already have navigate. What am I doing? And then I'm going to say two. Actually, I'm not going to say two. I'm just going to say back up, go back. And say you went three layers inside the page. You can call this twice. <laughs> or this is going to directly take you to the home page. So let's keep this one silent, but you can use that as well. And also let's add whatever we said here, scroll down. Say if you want to scroll down, how do we do that? Okay, let's add public void scroll down. Yeah, this is where I'm going to introduce the actions class in Selenium. And it's usually the name for builder. You might have heard, but you can give it any name, actions, action, action, object, or something. And then you're going to say new actions and it requires a parameter which is our driver because it's going to take actions based on driver connection now the most simplistic way to tell builder hey builder i want to first you see send keys There are a bunch of options. So we can say, we can, uh, most simplistically, we can use the keys class and say page down. All right. And let's test this scroll down and say we do that twice. And then I'm going to show you another method. Say, let's copy this before we test it. Let's add one more and say, scroll down two. Now we specify a locator. So we can say, give me a web element. Now this one has a parameter or you can overload it, but not really need it right now. 
Now, instead of using this option, we're going to have, let me get rid of the line here. We're just going to say, hey, builder. Now what I tell you to do is more than what I ask you to do. But wait a second. Builder will tell you, hey, brother, you forgot something at the end. If you want me to work, you have to say something at the end. And I'll get to it in the next minute. And now we have our element. And we're going to say, after page down, let's put dot and then say, move to element. You see that option, right? And then we already passed the element right here. And then, like I was telling you, builder requires some action. So those are special keywords that used at the end of the statement. Say send keys, do this, do that. But if you don't perform it, no, oh, it's not going to work. So you have to say dot build dot perform. All right. Similarly, build then perform. And similarly, let's move this one down. And we can say dot build dot perform. Now they should be happy about scrolling down. And when you get to that object, optionally, you can click this element if you want. Later on, you can develop this code better, but not really needed. So all we have to do is to call these methods in one of our tests. Let's see if it's going to work. Actually, let's do navbar test three, test four. So let me copy this. Okay, right here. Add one more. Let's say test four. And then finally, I'm going to take, take these two lines to the setup method above. So we don't keep uh, this one actually, not, not the object, because I need it for the test. So right now, you open the page and don't click anywhere. Let's delete this stuff. After we open the page, let's see. We are right here. And let's scroll down because our goal is to scroll down and find this block. Let's inspect it. That's an A tag with href. And all we have to do, we can also use the same method, A contains, because it's A tag. You just change this keyword because it looks at any A tag there is. So if we say blog, it should be able to find it. There it goes. So this is our element. Let's copy this. And let's add it to our Amazon home. And let me copy this one real quick. OK. 
Okay, I'm just going to add this expat, replacing this one. And then the name is actually blog. There it goes. Now, inside of our test, we're just going to say scroll down to that was the method and let's make it static so we can say if i don't know if you made it static so say base class down so checking it now let's make it static and let's also make this one static And let's come back and then scroll down to requires a parameter which is going to be from Amazon home page dot blog this is our web element right this is the blog and let's see if it's going to do what it will we ask it to do let's run That was fast, but let me do this. Let's just for demonstration purposes, let's go back to base class. Actually, not the method, but let's go back to our after suite. Which is closing. Where is the closing? There. I'm just going to make the silent line 35. I just want to see the blog on the page after it scrolled down. If it does, it kind of did, but it was too fast. You didn't see it. There you go. Now you can see the bottom of the page. And if you don't believe me, it was, if you see, if I use the mouse scroll, you could have noticed how I scrolled down to the page, right? And the test was like that. And how we did this, let's use the other one. Let's make this silent and say hey base class there is also scroll down let's see how much it scrolls down you probably had two scroll downs let's see how that turns out All right, this much. Not bad. From the page down to this page. Okay. So this one is just something. And just like this. Now, can you do scroll up? Let's add one. Scroll. Say once you get something from the bottom of the page, scroll up. Let's change this to page up.
say scroll up. When we say scroll up, let's use the move to element. And for that matter, let's add a web element from the top of the page. Let's say this Amazon thingy. And that has ID. So let's use that one. There we go. Now logo sprites. Let's take this one and go back to our Amazon homepage. And just like this. Let me copy CSS. Say dashboard or something or top of the page you can name anything so we're gonna cut this and then paste right here all right now let's come back to our test i mean base and before we build, scroll up, let's say move to. Move to element. And we can get it from Amazon Home Dashboard. And let me move this one down. And as you can see now, Actions class, the builder will move it all the way up to the dashboard. But let's say dot build then perform that got deleted on the way and we can also move this one down and actually we can line them up that's something also let's chain them together so you can also learn about that I already made a separate video for chaining in the Java section in the design playlist, design pattern playlist. You can always check it out. The, the class name is base. And B is supposed to be big letter capital, but oh wow, you can change it. Um, now I want the methods not void but base type okay so i'm just gonna say base instead of void all right and right here and then right here why i do this so i can call them at just like i did right here And if you make all of these for the base class, you have a requirement to do. Let me remind you that requirement. You have to say, return this. All right. So if you don't say this, you cannot change the methods. So for example, you can say, this one right here now they become happy and if you have questions you can still ask and because these are static they're not happy about it so we can get rid of static and we'll take care of that problem and we can say as you can see, these methods that we made, they don't require any return. They take care of the action. And this return is only meant for backing up to the object of base class. So you can call the next object.
Okay, and then let's add one more here. Again, get rid of the static right here. And we got all of them. Let's go to this problem and let's fix it. So now we cannot go by class name, which is why we just there are a couple ways, but we can use an object of the base class. Say, say base B equals new wait a second. If you ever make, do you see it has curly braces? For that matter, we have to implement them, but I don't want to implement it, so I'm going to do this. Let me just do this. And it says, because base is abstract, you cannot make object of this class. But say, right here. I'm just going to add an inner class and say public, let's say inner base. And then let's see if it's going to like what we do. And then this is going to be not abstract class, just a regular class. Inside of the inner base, we are going to do all our methods inside this block. And we can optionally make this static. And then let's Cut all our chain methods inside of here. And we have a little problem. And let's fix that. It says, oh, this again. So this magnifying thingy. But Here it says, do this. It changed the name of the class from base to inner base. Or let's try another one. If you can do that. Instead of this. And we say base dot class let's click this. If we do this, we are using generics and let's not use generics right now. So much for that. Let's just do inner base chains. All right. And, and you can see the inner class name comes up for the chain. So we're going to say base dot inner base, and then we can chain it. And then I'll show you an example. And then fix this. And then let's take a look at what's going on here. And then let's fix it. And let's go to this problem. Now, base is unhappy, right? Uh, but I want to make an object of inner base. Can I just do that? Why not? Because inner base is not abstract, right? Just one type of solution. 
if it was abstract, yeah, you had a problem. But now, let's say B dot, you can see a bunch of options. Scroll down. But, like I was telling you, now we can do all sorts of things with the chain stuff. So, for example, now I want to start with scroll down two, and let me use this object block because it was taking it all the way down. And now I can say dot scroll up all the way to the up. All right, so this is chain one. And as you can see, we can continue building. We can now say dot again. It doesn't matter where you put it. I'm just lining them up in the way. Let's do a refresh. And then let's do scroll down, then you can do as many as you want, as it makes sense or not, you just need to make sure that you know what you're doing. I'm just doing scroll up and down, up and down, up and down, that's something like that, all right? Scroll down to blog again, all right? And then scroll up. This is more than enough example. <laughs> scroll up. All right. But uh, next time we can add hover over or highlight so you can see more cool stuff with it. Now let's run this and see what's happening to the page. Oh wow. It's going to be one of the ones you're going to say, what is this guy doing? This is fluent interface design. It is very much readable. And it's just circling through the page. <laughs> it is kind of fast, but you just saw how that happened. Uh, those of you who didn't pay attention, let me run it one more time. Optionally, you can put wait times in between these calls uh, to get rid of timeout exception, and we are going to cover that in our following videos. Up, down, refresh, down, down, something. It didn't close, of course, because I was thinking that quit is open, but I forgot to turn it back on, so we can now turn it back on, now that we know. And final thing I want to show you is, okay, now I have this new code. How are you going to access it? Now you don't see this. Remember what I told you about following through step one, git add src, right? This is the most simplest way you can do. Go to your terminal and say git add src, all right? And then step two, you're going to say git add, I mean git commit, not add, commit and say dash m and then we're going to say fluent interface design example. And what is the example? Now bar test for method. And this is our note, and let's press enter. And you can see that it shows 
three files changed. And those are the test class, Amazon Home, and base class, right? Because those are what we have open up top here and only changes down here. But remember, you do not change your base when you set up. So you need to set up in a way that you do not change it. And I'll go over that coding practices, best practices in our following videos. But that depends on your uh, company uh, understanding teamwork how your team deals with the conventions. And now step three, you can just say get push. There you go, I didn't use origin main. And there you are. Now you of all people can go and check out the SRC. You see this note right here, fluent interface design example. Navbar test for method. So let's click that and you can see what are some changes. This shows the changes and what added. Test for right here. Or optionally, if you don't want to go through here, just go back to the project and click this SRC. And you can go to this code to download a zip or copy this code and remember how i showed you when you copy this code go through your vcs git and then clone and then paste the link right here oh i didn't have the link copy but when you add the link here click clone it's going to clone inside this directory so you're going to have something like this. And then you, you have the code ready working in your computer. It's going to do some setup. It's going to take some time on your first run. But remember, you have to have a Java set up on your machine. If you want to work this out, you can download it. It's easy peasy. And if you have problems when you clone it, Please ask your questions in the comments below and I will help you out. All right. That's no big deal. And optionally, uh, maybe 30 minutes or 15 minutes Zoom live meetings that I will host. Uh, so you can join and ask conversations. I'm going to be doing that weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, depending on the request. So I'll help you with your project setup and project design and whatever you have questions, I will help you. Alrighty. Thank you so much again for watching and hopefully this was helpful until next time.